Today on Wings, we have a documentary by Margareta Darcy, Irish actress, playwright, filmmaker, and peace activist, and a founder of Galway's Raging Grannies. Now in her late 80s, Margareta has been jailed many times for her bold activism on behalf of peace and Irish neutrality. Hello, we're the Galway Raging Grannies. We set up a few years ago when we heard about the Raging Crannies in the US, Canada and elsewhere. Galway is in the west of Ireland. The Atlantic is next door and next stop is America. So we first heard about Raging Grannies. I think I read something about the newspapers and I was visiting at a small little party and I mentioned the Raging Grannies and suddenly a woman who I hadn't thought of as being very political suddenly said, Raging Grannies. That's a great title. We should become part of Galway's Raging Grannies. And I wondered why she was so emphatic about being a granny. And then she told me that she had just been contacted by her daughter, who had two children. She had given up her daughter for adoption years and years ago. So many Irish women had to give up their children for adoption because of shame, because their families didn't want to know, because as single parents, how were they to live? And I suddenly realised that Galway's raging grannies, we were not only talking about the injustices about what was happening in our country, but the injustices that each woman had had during those long years. So we became Galway's Raging Grannies. All right, Grannies, are you ready? I downloaded some of their songs and I thought that the songs were so similar to a lot of our problems. Like, the grannies are swarming with warnings of warming. It's time we're performing our country's great shame. So we'll keep performing our global informing till they stop deforming the earth in our name. Now, same situation what's happening in Ireland. Here's another one. How many nights must a child go to bed without being properly fed? In this great country, how many must die before our politicians see red? The answer, of course, must be in our hearts. There's plenty of food for us all. Well, now in Ireland, we are one of the richest countries in Europe. We've homelessness. How many nights must I sleep in the streets in winter so bitterly cold? How many more must die on our streets before the world's another year old? How many nights must they sleep in the streets in winter so bitterly cold? How many more must die on the streets? The grassroots movement aims to make the world a better and fairer place for all. So everyone's welcome to join us and have a granny. It's a global movement, we sing songs peace and love. We sing for our children and grandchildren too and our voices ring out clear and strong with the news that capitalism is fouling our land so we must change the system. That's the granny's demand.
Um, PESCO stands for Permanent Structured Corporation. It's an anacronym, and essentially, it means um, it came about because of the Lisbon Treaty, which they was the referendum that we got wrong. Which, in actual fact, we obviously got it right in the first place, and then they gave it to us again, and then this is what we signed up for: um, a permanent structured cooperation, basically with the superpowers, France and Germany. And what it means is an EU army to fight a threat. Of course, the threat now is Russia. The threat is America. The threat is made up. There's no threat, and there's no need for an EU army. And I'm an advocate for pacifism. No EU army. Tesco, not Tesco. Lads. So we identified. And then we began making our own songs as well. We shall not pay for endless wars. We shall not pay for endless wars. We'll pay for jobs and health and education, not for endless wars. We don't want Leo supporting endless wars. We don't want Leo supporting endless wars. We should all tell Michael D and Sabina no more endless wars. No to the EU army. Peace, not Petco. <coughs> Raging grannies strike again here in Shop Street with our songs. Peace, not Petco. Because what we found out is that in Ireland we have an almond industry. Now, we always thought Ireland was meant to be a neutral country. We always thought we had nothing to do with wars, we had nothing to do with the almond industry. And suddenly the Raging Granny songs opened our eyes to what was happening in our own country. And that is one of the reasons why we suddenly decided, Galway's Raging Grannies, what a wonderful word, raging, raging, raging grannies. That's the key, the word raging grannies. And nothing can stop us. No more. Many of you may have landed at Shannon. It's the first stop that you come to when you leave the United States of America. Shannon, which is one of our international airports. It was the first airport to actually introduce free duty, which meant is you go to Shannon and buy as much booze and cigarettes and goods as you wanted. But Shannon, on the one hand, it's a civilian airport. We have our tourists coming in. We have our people going to America for work. But on the other hand, it's also occupied by the military. How can it be that we can have a civilian airport and at the same time a military airport? So this is one of the reasons why Raging Grannies is that we decided to rage not only down at the airport, but also outside our ministers, our Minister of Transport, who has allowed planes to land, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, who allows these planes to go through Shannon, when, on the other hand, they say, we're a neutral country. We don't support wars. We are a non-military country, and yet they are at Shannon. It's a visible proof of their lies, which we have to expose. Three million troops, American troops, through Shannon Airport in the last few years. No to PESCO, no to NATO, no to war, no conscripting 19-year-old young men to fight someone else's imperialist wars. So at Shannon? We go in, we sing, we dance, we throw rice on the floor, food, not bombs. And the authorities there, they don't know what to do with us. One time when we went in, there were a plain load of tourists and they began clapping us as we were doing our line dancing and the authorities they didn't know which was worse, the tourists clapping us and taking photos, the press that was there, total confusion. 
we also cut the fence. We cut the fence, they come along. What can they say to us? We're raging grannies. We go to the D Department of the Foreign Affairs. We tie up the doorway so that when the minister comes out, he is tied up. What can they say to us? We're the raging grannies. It's as if the word raging grannies has got a powerful force behind it. Raging grannies. They don't know what to do with us. Raging grannies. Raging grannies. Raging grannies. Oh, yes. We have a lot to rage about. You know by the cost of peace to Ireland, the U.S. Army has the right of way. Consider what the aircraft plan at Shannon, transporting troops and weapons every day. A thousand U.S. soldiers pass through Shannon weekly and destroy the concept of neutrality. They only bring corruption and abuses, suffering and criminality. Thousands of young American soldiers have gone through Shannon, coming from the most disadvantaged sections of America. They don't know where they're going, they don't know what war they're fighting for, and they don't know why. 30,000 of them have committed suicide when they come home. Traumatized, mentally and physically ill. Compared to 7,000 have been killed in combat. But 5 million people have been killed in wars led by the US NATO forces. One million children have died through starvation, through bombs, through destruction of their villages, led by the US NATO forces. And our government, which is meant to be neutral, has allowed this to happen. The US Army has the right of way. We've issued a press release. Raging Granny say it's time to confront the ministers. Raging Grannies will gather outside the Department of Transport, Tourism and Sport to demand that the minister stop authorising the daily transit of weapons through Shannon Airport by the US military. And we're asking the public to join our colourful protest at the department. We're also going to make ourselves heard at the Department of Foreign Affairs, which is authorising the use of Shannon by other US military planes. Anyone who feels as we do, rage, humiliation and emotional abuse is invited to confront the ministers who are almost daily authorizing aircraft operated by or contracted by the US military to refuel at Shannon Airport to fly through Irish sovereign airspace. These aircrafts are carrying weapons and munitions of war and armed soldiers to fight in wars that they know nothing about. Raging grannies are on the move. The raging grannies are on the move. The raging grannies are on the move. Two raging grannies out on the loose. Two raging grannies who let them out. Look at the Americans, see how they run with their killing machines, their bombs and their guns. Two raging grannies out on the loose. 
two warrior women busy cleaning house with peace and love and handfuls of rice. Two raging grannies not being denied see there the fire in righteous eyes. Two raging grannies who will not be denied armed with the truth exposing lies. Your planes bring death. Your planes bring death. The children cry. The children cry, the children cry, no planes, no war, the children cry, no planes, no war, listen to their cry, when your bombs drop into their lives and they die. When your bombs drop into their lives and you and they die, they die, they die. They die. They die. The children cry. No planes, no planes, no planes, no planes, no planes. No 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 and your bombs drop. In World War II, Ireland was neutral. Since that time is that we have not engaged in any wars. But over the weekend, we had a statement from our Prime Minister saying, country will have to reflect on military policy. He then explains that we have already been involved in Europe with the participation in PESCO, Permanent Structured Cooperation, which was passed by our parliament a few years ago. And that meant that Ireland then was part of talks about how best to defend Europe and whether we should give money to the defence. In other words, the creation of a European army. I was out today in my local main street to find out how people thought about things. When we had the Lisbon Treaty a few years ago, the first treaty was rejected because it was totally incomprehensible, but we were campaigning constantly against the fact that the Lisbon Treaty would mean that Irish troops would be involved in war. So we had another Lisbon Treaty, and this time our language was put in that Ireland should not participate in any war, that our Irish troops should not go to war, and to guarantee this was put in place something called the Triple Lock. Now, the Triple Lock means that we cannot send troops to any war unless the government agrees. We cannot send troops to any war unless the parliament agrees. And number three, which is the one important factor today, is that we cannot send troops abroad unless the war is guaranteed as a just war by the United Nations. Now, the situation with which our government is facing and Europe is facing, they do not trust the United Nations anymore because China and Russia sit on the Security Council and they can veto any formulation of Ireland to break the triple lock and end our neutrality. Now, what's very interesting is Russian ambassador in Ireland suddenly says, 
that Ireland is at the head of anti-Russian protests in the European Union. And also, the Russian ambassador explains that Ireland's neutrality is absolutely guaranteed that we should not have anything to do with the Ukrainian war. And he says, in general, the Irish are kind, but sometimes when they don't understand the situation, they take sides without any analysis. And he goes on, that it is the NATO forces that were surrounding the countries on the border of Russia. And as we know, that many of the NATO forces are coming through Shannon. Just today, I got an email that the US and Ukrainian planes are passing through Shannon, loaded with guns and some kind of military equipment, and they are flying off to Poland. So today, a beautiful, beautiful sunny day, I decided to find out what the Irish people feel about us ending our neutrality. So I came out with a, with a little notebook, approached people and said, look, I'm doing a survey and there's one question I would like you to answer. Should non-aligned neutrality to be enshrined in the Irish constitution? Now, data collected from every public opinion poll on Irish neutrality by public opinion polling companies have showed that 82% of the Irish people support neutrality in all its aspects. Because the Article 29 of the constitution states Ireland affirms its devotion to the ideal of peace and friendly cooperation amongst nations founded on international justice and morality. Now, in the words of James Connolly, who was executed in 1916, we serve neither king nor Kaiser. So this morning, I opened my door, brilliant sunshine, my neighbour was coming out of her door and I thought I'd ask the first question and I said, oh, do you think we should give up on neutrality and join the war? And she looked rather a bit perplexed and she said, uh, I don't really know anything about it. And I said, look, should we be non-aligned neutrality to be enshrined in the constitution? And she says, well, we've got to help the Ukraine people. And I said, yes, but how, what kind of help do the Ukraine people need? And she said that she didn't know. So she was undecided about whether we should be a non-aligned neutral country or whether we should go to war. She said she'd think about it. So across the road, there was a young man and I went across to him and I said, should we be a non-aligned neutral country and should it be enshrined in the constitution? And he said, definitely. He said, I want to shoot Putin, but definitely is that we should have nothing to do with wars. So you have an elderly lady and you have a young man with opposing views. So I go down Shop Street, which is our main street, and many people are there. It's at one o'clock, it's lunchtime. People are sitting in cafes, enjoying themselves. <laughs> and so I spotted a friend of mine who was having coffee with her husband. So I put this question and she said, definitely. And she gave me a very good line. She said, stop 
weaponizing the world. Stop weaponizing the world. Now, our husband was really quite interesting, even though he's meant to be a therapist. And he kept on about the um, broad, long weapon that was used back before the Middle Ages. And his understanding was, we've always had wars. And wars are always going to be. So my friend and I, we shouted at him and we said, if that is your attitude, wars will continue. But let us stop wars and stop taking sides. And he said, I hate Putin. I hate Putin. I'm for Biden. When I pointed out about Biden and the American policy of all the wars that they've engaged in and all the damage that has been happening, Iraq, Afghanistan, the Yemen, and in spite of the United Nations policy about Palestine, would one want to live there? Would one want to be a free person in Palestine? So I then moved on and spoke to another couple, and they were Americans, and they agreed, yes, is that we need neutrality, but what they said is, that's not going to mean anything, because we have all these big countries, and they can just do anything they want with us. So with my research, I definitely found is that young people have an awareness, and they don't want wars. Older people feel helpless that they don't have any power. But, on the other hand, research has shown if 3.2% of the population rise up and against something, is we can then win. And I think that the young people are going to make sure that we don't lose our neutrality. Thank you. This is Margaret and Darcy from Ready Park Woman signing off. And the program has been edited and recorded by my dear son, Finn Arden. And here's a message for all the raging grannies round the world. I send my love and my hope for a better world. All right, grannies, are you ready? Are you ready? ready? <laughs> Ta-da! To hear Wings shows again, email wings at wings.org. Wings thanks your local radio stations, Suzette Cullen and Genevieve Vaughn, whose works include Women and the Gift Economy. This is the Women's International News Gathering Service.